Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Wars The Old Republic video. And in this video we will be talking about the uh, kind of future of Sotar with the next two months or so. Basically what we're going to be getting in March and April. It's nothing too exciting or, or great and definitely no new information about the expansion or if you're even getting an expansion. Honestly, after reading this roadmap, I kind of felt like not getting an expansion is actually a possibility and it could just be more of these kind of smaller update type things. Let's kind of discuss a little bit later but we'll get into what we are getting for sure. So we'll start with on March 13th. That's when we're going to be getting a game update 5.8 which is called Command Authority. And basically of course we're going to be getting the new operation boss which is Isaacs the Destroyer. He will be the final boss of the operation. There's going to be two modes with him, Story and Master Mode. And so, you know, we will of course have master mode for this boss, but he also, Keith also mentioned, we will not be getting a full master mode for all of the other bosses in the operation. That was just a decision he had to make. But one of the cool things they're doing with Isaacs is they're going to run an event based around defeating the boss. And basically, we're, apparently we're going to get some really cool rewards. For example, there's going to be an achievement a unique title and an enticing legacy based reward which might very well be some sort of really cool weapon or armor set based off of him probably a weapon um, but so yeah so there's going to be an event based around him probably in defeating him with master mode um, ability so or sorry i meant master mode difficulty so um yeah that's basically what's going to be coming with the operation boss um, I'm quite excited for that event, but I've never really done PvE, so maybe we'll have to get back into it because I do want that title and the legacy base reward depending on what it is. Could also be a mount, I should have mentioned that. And then we're going to be getting um, a conquest revamp. So they want to change kind of conquest, they probably want to get more people going into it. So of course conquest has had a lot of problems recently with a lot of bugs and glitches that didn't let people get their rewards. So they said they do, they're do they doing some back end stuff that's going to make sure that doesn't really happen as often as it has been. But perhaps more importantly we're going to be getting a lot of new improvements to the system in general. So we're going to be getting a new interface, a new daily objectives and missions so that you know more stuff to, to reach your conquest objective. And then also so a new conquest vendor and this vendor is actually going to have some really neat items so it's going to have new decorations uh, and then a new companion boost that is called the commander's compendium this was actually data mined and i didn't talk about it purposefully because i wanted to get more information about it basically what it is is it's a boost that lets you instantly get your companion to influence level 50. so any companion you have instantly level 50 and a lot of people were speculating this was going to be a cartel market item and they weren't too happy about that because it's kind of going off that pay to win thing but this isn't a cartel market item it is indeed something you have to earn in game through doing conquests and I think this actually might be a very successful way of getting people back in a conquest because uh, you know getting your, your companions up to influence level 50 can be a very time consuming and expensive process for me credits aren't a big issue but I just don't have the time to sit there and constantly click you know the companion gift ability and give it to them it can actually take up to like an hour per companion and so um this boost is going to be pretty cool and useful and considering that we keep getting new companions back and new cartel market companions, I do think this is going to successfully make some people more interested. It's definitely piqued my interest. And so that's kind of cool. That's going to be coming into the game. Um, and then they did kind of mention or they did kind of suggest that we're going to be getting new rewards to this conquest vendor. So this is just kind of the initial rewards and the new stuff might be added uh, as time goes on. So those are some of the new conquest stuff we're getting. Of course, we're going to be getting some new companion stuff. So we're going to be getting an Arcan Romance. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking for that. That was data mined a while ago and basically confirmed, but now he's going to be a romanceable companion. Then we're also getting Vector as a returning companion and Ashara as a returning companion. But Vector will only return for Imperial Agents and Ashara will only return for Sith Inquisitors. So it's a, it's a class-based return and not just for everyone. And um, we also have another small thing here, which they didn't give us any information on, but they said regarding the cartel market, obviously they've changed a lot of, about the cartel market. We've seen a lot more direct sales, returning items and all that kind of stuff. And they said they're looking to make some additional big changes with game update 5.8. We don't have any details about that right now though, but they did say they're big changes. So I'm kind of curious to see what that will be. All right, going on into April, this is going to be game update 5.9. And this one is called the Nathema Conspiracy. 
So if you guys recall, uh, back a few months ago, they mentioned that with the final Flashpoint chapter uh, and the whole Theron Sean story arc, we'll be returning to a planet that we had gone to earlier but hadn't seen a lot of it. And so that planet, a lot of people hypothesized was going to be Oricon. I personally thought it was going to be Oricon as well, but it looks like it's actually going to be Nathema, which I am very happy about because I love that planet. There's a lot of really cool lore associated with that, obviously, with Vitiate and everything. It was just a really well done planet in Kotet as well. And I was actually really sad we didn't get to see a lot more of it. So I'm happy we're going to be going back to that planet and perhaps seeing some new creatures and all that good stuff. This will be the final concluding chapter for the Flashpoint and um, surprisingly enough they're also going to be introducing a new tier of augments with this game update. So uh, you know we got a new tier of augments very recently but it looks like they're doing yet another one and it's going to be you know based off of things that dropped during the Flashpoint so there's going to be a bind on pickup drop and then a really rare um, bind on equip drop. So obviously the bind on equip one will be something you can sell on the GTN and it'll probably sell for many millions of credits but the bind on pickup one is also going to give you the schematic that's going to allow you to, um, to craft the new augments. We don't have any new information right now though on the materials that will be needed for this new augment. So are we going to get new materials? Are we going to use existing ones? We don't quite know that yet. Uh, they said in, in re with regards to operations, Isaacs will offer an amazing new reward. And they also said they're going to be providing a new vendor outside of the God of the Machines operation which will offer special items for players who have earned an achievement for killing Isaac. So basically they want to promote a lot of people to, to do that operation and to kill the boss. And it's definitely, as I said, piqued my interest. So I'm going to go and probably participate in that because I love the new flashy rewards. And just I'm hoping that, you know, it's going to be good. Um, with regards to companions in April, we will see the return of Felix Areso, which is the Jedi Consular's companion, and also Mako and Akavi. So Mako for the bounty hunters and Akavi for the smugglers. I haven't done the smuggler storyline, so I don't know about Akavi, but uh, if that's even how you pronounce his name. But Mako, I know a lot of people have been wanting her back, so that's great that she's coming back. Still no Jaysa or Kira. Uh, I would love for Jaysa to return, but I guess that's just not on the menu for now. But that's all the way in um, April. Then they also mentioned some other stuff, like for example, we're going to be getting newer subscriber rewards. So we do have the Swotar Share the Love promotion going on, and we're going to be getting the Chiss Talon Interceptor and the Force Veterans Armor set. So that's kind of cool, but they also suggested that we're going to be seeing a whole series of subscriber promotions this new year. And that's kind of awesome. Now here is a little something I want to talk about at the end of this video. All right, so obviously it's not like a crazy amount that, that we're getting. Um, that's kind of understandable. That's just the direction that, that the devs have been taking the game. We've been getting small trickles of content, a new feature here or there. But they did talk about kind of what's coming beyond April. And they talked about how they recognize that there's a desire within the community for a traditional expansion, which is they give us a lot of stuff at one point in time versus kind of trickling down the content. So instead of getting a flashpoint, then months later another flashpoint, then months later another flashpoint and operation boss, we're just going to be getting everything at once. And that is definitely a lot more fun for the community. We have more stuff to do and everything this just doesn't feel fragmented, right? Like I would have liked to go through the entire Theron Sean story arc rather than kind of going through a little bit then having to wait a month to go through another month. I even forget what even happened or what decisions my characters made. Like it's kind of a weird fragmented uh, story experience. So it's definitely better to get traditional expansions. And they recognize that that's the case and they're thinking about doing it in the future. But basically it's just a bunch of wordplay. We don't actually know what they're going to be doing. And they said we might, we might not. We don't actually know. What actually bothered me a little bit was that they referred to 6.0 as a game update. Now I'm not sure that's a big or a small thing. I'm just saying if they were actually planning an expansion and were going to do an expansion in the near future, uh, they would have probably just said the 6.0 expansion or something. But the 6.0 game update just makes it sound like it's, it's going to be exactly that. A game update with, with, new, with some new features and maybe a little bit of story or PvP stuff, or, uh, but nothing too big, nothing too massive. And I think we've been spoiled a little bit with Codfi and Kotet. Like they weren't the best written stories. A lot of missions were incredibly boring where you had to just kind of keep grinding and killing mobs and stuff. But at least we got big stuff. At least it was kind of fun to play around the first time. But I really am not liking this this re this huge lack of content and um, it's kind of understandable. I guess the dev team's pretty small and I highly doubt that EA is putting a lot of money or funding towards the game. Um, if we're completely honest, I'm just kind of happy that the game's not being shut down and we can still kind of enjoy uh, what we do have. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think about the roadmap. Are you excited about the direction it's being taken into? Or are you like me and hoping that uh, we see a really big expansion come? in the next few months. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one.